Good afternoon. I'm Jeff Maneri, President and CEO of Grinnell Mutual. I want to thank you for joining today's presidential address in conjunction with our 113th annual meeting. In 2020, we all faced a few challenges. Grinnell Mutual in the world faced the COVID-19 pandemic. And later, we and many of our mutual mem members were struck by the Midwest derecho. Regarding the pandemic, we started talking about this on February 14th, talking about how would we operate if we had a high percentage of our employees sick and at home, or what if the state or the federal government shut down our facilities due to COVID-19. So each SLT member, senior leadership team, started thinking about this, jotting notes, doing some research. Then on February 28th, we had our first meeting, our first response team meeting on what we would do. We discovered some gaps in our operations and discovered that we did not have the equipment necessary at that moment to send our entire staff home to work from home. Our team worked diligently and on March 16th and March 17th, 95% of our staff moved and transitioned to a work from home status. Initially during this transition, during the first couple of days and for the next week, our service levels decreased a little bit. But by the end of 10 days, our service levels had returned to normal. And by the end of March, we actually had improved our service levels. Now, this whole process, we kept two things in mind. Number one, we wanted to protect our employees. And number two, we wanted to maintain our high service standards. So those were the two goals that we set. And I'm proud to say that we met them in 2020. Then on August 10th, just as we were settling into a calm and dry weather pattern, the August 10th Midwest derecho struck us and many of our member mutuals. Now with this event, it was early estimated that in our footprint, the states that we operate in and our member mutuals operate in, that there would be over $3 billion of property losses. And that's excluding any losses to crops. Now, this upper Midwest derecho event caused almost 13,000 claims for Grinnell Mutual and our member mutuals. And that's a record from any one storm event. At the end of May, this derecho has almost reached $300 million of losses for Grinnell Mutual and our members. The actual number is $292.3 million. Grinnell Mutual's portion of this amount is $268.2 million. $224.4 million in reinsurance recoveries paid to our member mutuals and $43,750,000 of losses that occurred on our direct lines business, our auto and our commercial property primarily. Now, how often would this event occur? Well, number one, we learned two things. The models that predicted this type of event, they feel are not accurate. There's two main models, the AIR model and the RMS model. One, the AIR model said this event would happen one in every 1,160 years. And if that's the case, I think we'll all be safe and never see this type of event again. The RMS model said it would happen one every 280 years. Talk a little bit more about that in just a second. Now, taking a look at the largest losses that we have ever had, and I do have a typo in this slide, the Parkersburg tornado, which was Memorial Day weekend of 2008, the losses paid by Grinnell Mutual to our member mutuals and also on our direct lines claims was 55.2 million. This Midwest derecho loss caused losses to Grinnell Mutual to date of 268.2 million. 
that would indicate that this event, the Midwest derecho, was five times larger than our largest event on history. But we also could say that if we were to pay those Parkersburg tornado losses today, we would pay in today's dollars. And what would that be? That's estimated in today's dollars, those losses would be almost 92 million. And if we factor maybe one year change on the cost to rebuild the losses from the 2020 derecho, the losses would be almost 279 million. So still, the Midwest ratio would be three times larger than the Parkersburg tornado. Now, we talked about the modeling just a little bit earlier on, and this is what I wanted to say. The reinsurers that Grinnell Mutual works with, they anticipated that our worst year ever would be $100 million from any one catastrophic event, 100 million. Partly, you can see they were saying that the Parkersburg event would probably be one of the worst events that Grinnell Mutual would have. Now, what they are saying is they think we would have this one in a hundred million dollar event once every hundred years. Now, the spreading of our losses. Of that 248.6 million of losses currently that our member mutuals are addressing, they'll receive reinsurance recovery from Grinnell Mutual of 224.4 million or that's 90.3% of those losses. That shows the importance of having strong reinsurance. But what about Grinnell Mutual? Grinnell Mutual buys reinsurance as well. Of our 268.2 million of losses, we anticipate recovery of 215.8 million or 80.5%. So where are those losses being paid? Those losses are being paid by our reinsurers there's domestic reinsurers here in the United States, reinsurers in London, Europe, and also Bermuda. And that indicates how important it is to have strong reinsurance programs. So 2020 became our time to shine. Grinnell Mutual and our member mutuals had record losses. Also, many of these mutuals, and this would make sense, the local mutuals, that had local losses had damage to their offices as well. Many of their offices were without power, without phone, without internet. Grinnell Mutual's losses, uh, offices were also closed and unable, we were unable to operate for about 36 hours at our campus. Now, staff members working from home, dealing with their own losses. Staff members of these mutuals and Grinnell Mutual, they stepped to the plate, they performed, they helped meet our promise, even though many of those had damage to their own homes, to their own property. Many were without electricity or internet as well. I'm going to tell a story here. I'm going to tell a story about one of our underwriters, and I use this as an example because this is someone I visited with, but I'm sure I could have gotten the same story from 100 individuals. I left the office a couple days after the derecho at 5.30. As I went to my van, I was met by one of our underwriters. This underwriter, and remember, these underwriters, and we had claim staff here as well, but this underwriter had losses to their home, and they also were going home to, to a place that had no electricity, no air conditioning, it's 95 degrees, they also probably had damage to their home, trees damage to take care of. This underwriter turned to me and said, thank you for allowing us, some of us, to come back to the office, claim staff and underwriting staff, to take care of business, to continue to serve our customers. Thank you. Now, we did that properly. We were social distance, and we also wore masks. But imagine that. This is someone that's going home to a house with no air conditioning, hottest time of the year, probably you know, no hot water, uh, also no internet, uh, no, no electricity. Some individuals had this in our area 10 days, some in the Cedar Rapids area, even larger, longer periods of time, I realize that. But I think this really tells about our staff and also tells about your staff at our member mutuals. Serving our customers, taking care of their needs was the number one priority. Now, there's some other corporate actions and recognition items that we had during 2020 that I'd like to share with you. In 2020, we were recognized as the 108th largest property and casualty company in the United States by AMBES. 
We also were awarded the Ward's Top 50 Award for the fifth straight year, and only 50 companies meet this requirement and get on this list. And we've been on that list for five straight years now. Our employee recognition score has also improved. Now imagine this, during the pandemic and all the stress that came out of that, our employees' engagement scores improved. The Iowa Top Workplace, we were ninth rated company. We were the ninth rated company in the large company category. We have been in the top 10 for 10 straight years. And for twice, we've been in fourth place. In 2020, our scores actually improved. The same thing happened with our Gallup survey, which is another employee engagement survey we do. Our scores improved in 2020. Because of this and the high scores that we've had in the past, we were recognized as a Gallup Exceptional Workplace Award winner. Only 38 companies received this award, and it's a global award. It's not just a national award. It's very interesting to note that out of those 38 companies, Three came from the state of Iowa, one being Grinnell Mutual. I'm going to touch briefly on our 2020 corporate financials. Our reinsurance operations, due to this derecho event, suffered almost $50 million of underwriting losses. Our direct line operations, at almost a $9 million underwriting gain. Corporately, our underwriting losses were 31.2 million. Now, fortunately, we had a very strong investment gains, almost 50 million in 2020, and we had unrealized investment gains from the equity markets of almost $15 million. This allowed our surplus to grow $33 million, our year-end surplus stood at $764,859,000. Some more information, our written premium grew to $735 million. Our earned premium climbed to $656 million. Our loss ratio of the year was high uh, due to the duration. Our loss ratio was 66.8%. Our loss adjusting expenses were 9.2%. Our expense ratio was 28.8%. This produced a combined ratio of 104.8%. Our capacity ratio at the end of the year was 0.86 to 1. We have 86 cents of Written of earned premium, excuse me, compared to every dollar of surplus. Now we actually prevail. Through the hard work of our member mutuals and Grinnell Mutual, we dealt with the largest catastrophic event ever on record. Never before did we have such an opportunity to serve so many of our policyholders. We also prevailed because our member mutuals and Grinnell Mutual had excellent reinsurance programs, providing them a backstop, a safety net, and significant recovery. Also, we had unusual equ uh, equity gains during the pandemic. For Grinnell Mutual, this was unusual. Think about the pandemic, think about the economic stresses uh, placed upon everyone, and we still had gains in the stock market. We prevailed, but most importantly, we delivered on our promise to put our policyholders' lives back together, to put their lives and their property back together after suffering these catastrophic losses. It was truly our time to shine. Even with all the noise of 2020, we moved forward. We took steps moving forward in our operations. I would like to provide two examples. There's many more than two, but there's two that I want to provide to you today. We had significant commercial lines growth during 2020. 
Our written premium in 2019 at the end of the year was a little north of $204 million. At the end of 2020, we had $220.7 million of written premium in commercial lines, an 8% increase. Our policy count also grew. Our policy count grew almost 4%. And at the end of 2020, it climbed to 111,818 policies. This growth has continued during 2021. At the end of May, our written premium growth in commercial lines had grown 10.23%. And our policy count continues to grow and is growing at the clip of 3% year to date. Now, this is very unusual. If we think about 2020 in particular, we thought about businesses closing, businesses that couldn't even operate, sales were down, everybody's staying at home, and yet our commercial premium grew substantially and substantially more than the industry. So how could this be? And we've actually asked that question many, many times. Our theory is we remained open and remained providing our great customer service to our agents and to our policyholders as well during the pandemic. I think agencies at this time that were servicing their customers that were concerned needed to go into the market and they reached out to Grinnell Mutual because we were available. Some of these agencies may have not been using us as much as they are now. After going through this pandemic, I think they realized the great customer service and relationships that they have with our commercial lines department and Grinnell Mutual in general and started placing more business with us even during these difficult times. I think it truly shows that relationships and customer service is a key to success. The second example I'm going to give is the progress we made during 2020 on our Connect program. We are launching an entirely new platform and taking all of the opportunities to use that platform to increase our ability to serve our customers, to become more efficient, and to move forward in today's digital world. Now, as I will say, I'll show a little bit later, we launched this program. The first part was our auto and home program that we launched in the state of Pennsylvania on our new platform. Now, how's it working out for us? And we are seeing benefits in the state of Pennsylvania. And I'm gonna compare the Grinnell Compass, which is our new program, our new company. I'm gonna compare some of their results to the results that we're having with our Grinnell Mutual Standard Auto Policy and our Grinnell Select Elite. So we're gonna take a look at auto policies right now. Now, ECR, Exterior Comparative Raters. We might ask, well, what difference does this make? Well, agents use comparative raters to rate their quotes. We are also one of the companies that are on their rating systems. Now, taking a look at this, agents will take a look and use your company and put, place you in their rating system if you're competitive. So what are we seeing? For Grinnell Compass, that usage is 37.8%. So that means that our company is very competitive in that market for that agent. For Grinnell Standard and Grinnell Select Elite, that percentage is 10.7%. So quite an increase, quite an uptick with those agents in Pennsylvania using the Grinnell Compass Multivariant Auto Program. What about new business policy count per agent by month? What we're seeing for Grail Compass in Pennsylvania in the auto, 13.89, almost 14 policies per month, new business policies. On our legacy programs, Grinnell Mutual Standard and Grinnell Select Elite, it's 5%. So we're seeing substantial lift in the activity and the issuing of new business with agents using Grinnell Compass in Pennsylvania. Now, what about operational efficiencies? we want to have is if you're gonna adopt a new system, you better be having some efficiencies. Now we take a look at straight through processing and what is straight through processing? 
straight through processing is when a policy is submitted, it goes through the system, it hits all the underwriting requirements to be issued, and it's issued without the intervention of an underwriter. For Grinnell Compass right now, 87% of our auto business, our new auto business, goes through straight through processing, not handled by the underwriter. That does not mean we've reduced our requirements or lowered our submission standards. It just means we have a system that can monitor those and kick it to an underwriter if there's an issue. For our Grinnell Mutual and Grinnell Select Auto Program, only 25% of those policies can go through straight through processing. What about automated payments? 89% of the Grinnell Compass policyholders are making automated payments. That's only 60% with Grinnell Mutual and Grinnell Select. A side note here, and part of that reason, is Grinnell Compass allows for reoccurring credit card and debit card payments, which is almost table stakes in today's environment. If we take a look at the Connect timelines and what we're looking at for the future, I said that in 2019, it was February 2019, we launched Grinnell Compass Auto and Home in Pennsylvania. In the first quarter of 2020, we added the personal umbrella line for Pennsylvania in the Connect program, Grinnell Compass for Pennsylvania. And then the fourth quarter of 2020, we added watercraft and personal in the Marine. So basically, we rounded out the personal lines portfolio in Pennsylvania under Grinnell Compass. We anticipate launching Grinnell Compass Auto in Illinois in the fourth quarter of 2021. If all goes well, our next phase will be launching in the states of Wisconsin, Indiana, Ohio, Oklahoma, and Minnesota. And then the second wave of the rest of the states will be Iowa, North Dakota, South Dakota, and Missouri. We're very excited about this. We feel we'll have a very, very competitive auto program, much more detailed rating algorithms to be more granular, to help us charge the correct price for the correct policyholder. We're excited about this, and I'm very proud of what our team has accomplished moving this project forward. So 2020 and beyond. 2021 and beyond. 2020 was a year we had record stress. I don't care if it was personal stress, professional stress, stress at business, there is no doubt that the stress load was so heavy in 2020. And albeit most employees, including especially Grinnell Mutual employees, performed exceptionally well, we felt the weight of that stress. So what do we anticipate in 2021? Well, I know that there's times, and I'm one of these individuals, that I just want 2021 to be the year I can go back to normal. And hopefully by the end of the year, that will happen. I know many of us were looking forward to being able to go out, to go out to our favorite place to dine, to maybe join family members or see family members that might even be at risk for COVID, to travel, take a vacation, do all the things we couldn't do. So it's like, should 2021 just be that recovery year? But was the 2020 pandemic a black swan event? What is a black swan event? A black swan event is an unpredictable event that is beyond what is normally expected of a particular situation and has potentially severe consequences. And most of those severe consequences are significant changes. Black swan event was named because at one time in writing, there was no such thing as a black swan. All swans were white until one was discovered and that changed the mindset. So what have been some historical black swan events in our history? Well, World War I and World War II definitely caused major changes. The fall of the Soviet Union changed world politics. The rise of extremist ideology. 9-11 was a black swan event. The expansion of the internet and social media changed the world, and we didn't anticipate that. 
Also, financial crises, the 1987 financial crisis. And yes, I'm old enough to remember that. And the 2008 financial crisis as well. These were all black swan events. Was the, the pandemic of 2020 a black swan event? Well, what major changes do we see today already from it? The majority of employees want to work from home in the future and continue to work from home. Now, depending upon what research and what surveys you look at, 30 to 50 percent say that they would leave their current employer if forced to return to the office full time. What about our policyholders? They certainly, after this event, want a better and a more sophisticated digital experience. They want online quoting. They want to make online changes on their policies. They want to make online claims and digital claim submissions. They also want updated claim status reports at their beck and call. Our policyholders also will be demanding additional claims, payment, and billing options. Not only demanding it, just expecting it. They're wanting user based pricing, and they saw a little bit of this due to the pandemic and due to the fact that they were driving much, much less. Companies provided premium refunds, including Grail Mutual's Trust in Tomorrow premium refund. So that has people thinking, gosh, if I can change the way I operate, should I get a refund? And should I be allowed to participate in underwriting profits? Policyholders also want coverage and risk management advice and services. So all these things I feel are things that are rolling through, changing our landscape and primarily driven by the pandemic. So for us, resting is not an option. 2021 and 22 cannot be years where we just try to get back to normal. Our industry must build on its heritage and create for our future. We have to do that. And we have to do that now. We can't wait. Some quotes that I enjoy, you know, change or be changed. If you don't create your own positive changes, prepare to be changed. I think that's very, very true. And a second quote, don't wait for the right opportunity. You need to create it. I want to reflect back to the 2019 mutual advisor meetings that were held in all the states we operate in. Those were great meetings and those were customer meetings where we asked questions of what was needed in the future. I've shared this before. I think I shared it in last year's annual meeting, but our members wanted actual services assistance, especially with pricing, loss control services, data analytics, help with stat reporting service, and business excellence services or Lean Six Sigma reviews. So that's what was mentioned. That was top of the list of the things that needed to be built for the future. Now, if we're taking a look at this, actuarial services, data analytics, stat reporting services, all these require data aggregation. But what have you been doing about this? And this is not just Grinnell Mutual. I say, what are we and the member mutuals doing about this, our member mutuals? We've talked about the importance and need to take and use data to our advantage, but we're not placing enough urgency on this. I fear that that ship may be sailing without us. We really need to tackle this if we want to remain vital and vibrant for our customers in the future. So what about that future? Without action, what are we at risk at losing? That would be our farm and aggregate business market. At least that's one area, our farm and agribusiness market share. Grinnell Mutual and our member mutuals, I don't think we really fully appreciate our current status in that market. Now, this information was acquired in 2018, and it's very difficult to be 100% accurate with this information. But what we did, we tried to analyze from all the 
reports that are out there. What and who were the largest farm writing companies, farm writing companies in the states that our member mutuals operate in? Farm Bureau came out number one, over $215 million of farm property premium. Nationwide was number two, right close to 200 million. State Farm at 170 million. Farmers Mutual Insurance of Company in Nebraska, 117 million, and Country Financial, 113 million. But let's take a look at that and let's add our member mutuals in the states that we operate in. We estimate that collectively our member mutuals write 318 million of farm property insurance in our footprint in those states that they're located in, which would exceed Farm Bureau by over a hundred million dollars. Now, I know the person and the people that worked on this report, and they have a caveat out there that it's not perfect, but you know what? I think it certainly tells us that our member mutuals are very, very much involved and have a strong market penetration in the states we operate in, and also would probably more than likely, 90% possibility or greater that they're in the top three ag riders in their states. So this is what we have at risk if we don't do something about it. Now, why do I believe the farm and agribusiness is important to our future? And these are just opinions of mine. I think our Midwest farmers and agribusiness operations, they, they help feed the United States and the world. I think the growing world population will require more food products. I feel that this industry will continue to grow. Now, it may not grow just exactly like we see it today, but it's going to grow. And lastly, that we, Grinnell Mutual and our member mutuals, already have a very sizable footprint in our areas of operation. That's why I think it's so important to us. Now, can we just expect to maintain our footprint without making any internal changes? Can we just keep doing what we've done in the past and still be as successful or more successful in the future? Is our glass half, half empty or half full? Now, I truly believe that Grinnell Mutual and our member mutuals have a unique opportunity here. First of all, I think we're the right size. I think Grinnell Mutual is the right size that we can do a lot of great things and a lot of great things to support our member mutuals and our agents. I think we can become very nimble and we can react much quicker to changes than some of the largest organizations out there, some of the largest insurance organizations. I'm going to mention some examples. I'm going to go way back, first of all, to 1980. One of the things that started in the 70s and we were very proud of when I started as a marketing rep in 1980, we had our livestock confinement operation program. Confined swine program. We actually helped our member mutuals underwrite these newfangled risks and you've got to realize they were pretty small, very small compared to today, but they were new. How to underwrite it, how to price it, how to help write that business. We were on top of that, one of the first companies to do so. But what about recent history, Jeff? Well, we were one of the first companies to provide drone coverage to farmers. We dealt very, very, I would say very, very fairly and generously with the canvas situation that occurred. We have created livestock feeding coverage for custom feeding operations, providing coverage for the livestock in their care custody control. New coverages. We've also adjusted and provided coverage for farmers that you know, lease ground for wind turbine operations. And we've also, you know, ensured some hemp farming operations. So I think that we can show that we can react very, very quickly. We can do some things and we should. So the question can be asked, why us? Why do I think that we can do this? I would ask the question, why not us? Look at the strengths we have. 
We develop great personal relationships with our agents and our customers, Brunel Mutual and Member Mutuals. We have a lot of experience in this agribusiness field. We have expertise in claims handling, farm underwriting, uh, special investigations, loss control activities. We also have some fantastic mutual and agency training programs, general training programs, and our farm academy specific to the farm market. I really enjoy this quote by Rosemary Wixom. She states, individually we are strong, together we are invincible. We all know a team outperforms the individual. So what is Grinnell Mutual doing to build our future? I'm not going to read all these quotes, but there were so many I enjoyed. I wanted to put them up there. If you are, hopefully you can take a look at them and, and you know, pick out your favorites. But there's there's three that I am going to share. One was on Jerry, by Jerry Brown. The reason that everybody likes planning is that nobody has to do anything. Nobody has to do anything. Well, that's not true. Planning is a lot of work. And we're going to talk about this. But I think what he's saying is a lot of people would rather plan than execute the plan. Most plans fail because they're not executed. Ren Franklin said, by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. Malcolm X said, tomorrow belongs to the people who prepare today. Very true. And George Patton said, a good plan executed now is better than a perfect plan executed next week. Why? The world moves so fast. If you miss your opportunity, it doesn't come around a second time. So what about strategic planning? Gunnell Mutual's senior leadership team and our board of directors have spent an enormous amount of time preparing our strategic plan to support the future of the mutual industry. I ask you to stay tuned. Our strategic plan will be unveiled to our members in 2022. The excitement is building. We can do more, we must do more. Together we can accomplish anything. We must operate like our industry leaders did 150 or 170 years ago when they formed the mutual system in the Midwest, the mutual insurance system in the Midwest at your local mutual, mutuals. We must focus on meeting our policyholder needs just like they did in the early to mid 1800s. This will continue to be our time for our industry to shine. This will be continue to be the opportunities for us to serve more, just like we served all those unfortunate individuals that suffered from the 2020 derecho and suffered catastrophic losses at a time which was very stressful for them to begin with due to the pandemic. With that, I wanna thank you for joining me today. It's my hope that 2021 will be a wonderful and successful year for all of you, personally and professionally. Now, if you have any questions, uh, you can ask them by the Teams Q&A option that is available, and you'll see that on your screen, the little question box. So with that, I'll drop the PowerPoint down and I'll see if there's any questions. Just takes me a moment to do this. Here's a question that's asked that says, um, um, Jeff, if you had to choose one thing that was the greatest driver of Grinnell Mutual success during everything that happened in 2020, what would you say it was? Well, I think that's, that's a very, very easy question. That's a great question. It's very easy to answer. The successes that we've had in the past, and especially the successes we had during 2020 was based upon 
our outstanding employees. And I know that those of you that are tuning in that maybe you're an agent, maybe you're a member of mutual, you have those same type of outstanding employees. But it's employees that care about their work. They care about providing that service. They understand the importance of providing that service. That's the employees that would come to work when they had damage to their own property. They had their own issues to deal with, but wanted to make sure that things were getting done. Individuals that made sure they came in to handle claims because a lot of people didn't have access to systems to do that. That's Grinnell Mutual that offered our facilities to a mutual that was struck and they couldn't do operations at their location for a long period of time. And we said, we have a bay, we'll set you up and we'll start getting those claims set up for you and help give you the access to do that. So to me, it's all about the people. You gotta have the right people. You gotta have people that you trust, people that you admire, people that pull for the same way. They pull on that same rope to make it happen. That to me is the one thing, the greatest thing we had. And for us, it began in the pandemic with SLT members turning around and saying, well, let's really figure out what would happen in these areas if we had to exit this building. And took our IT staff turning around and their teams turn around and saying, well, you know what, we couldn't do it. We think we can do it, but we would have to do a lot of work to make this happen and move a lot of equipment around and make this happen. How could we do this? And came back and said, we can do this in 48 hours. And they actually did it in a little over 24 hours, getting everybody out the building with equipment that they could operate the next day. You know, it takes people that actually care about their company, they care about the customers, and they care about their coworkers. And I think that's what is the secret sauce of our industry. The one thing I'll say, my 41 years working with Grinnell Mutual, 41 years, I've met a lot of mutuals, I've met a lot of agents, I've met a lot of people that work in those operations, and everyone has that same attitude. They're gonna take care of business. They're gonna, you know, take care of situations. You don't hear these people saying, sorry, that's not my job. That's not my, uh, uh, the person you need to talk to is not here, so call them back tomorrow. We have individuals, all of us that focus on that. And that's the number one thing, our great staff, our great staff. Thank you for that question. I'd like to say this is like a call-in line and uh, just keep calling. The lines are all busy, but you know what? We're waiting for another question. So if you have a question, you can get in right away. I do uh, programs and like this or similar to this for our staff every Monday at one in the morning and one in the afternoon. And this is that awkward moment when we are asking for questions that are not coming in. I wanna say though, uh, as we wait for another question and I'll just wait a couple of minutes. I, I am so proud of what our industry did this last year. I'm so proud of how we found ways to keep our service levels at that same high standard or higher new ways of doing our work, new ways of communicating. And you know, for someone like myself that has been involved in the industry for 41 years, uh, some of those things were a little difficult to uh, get your hands on. You know, I'm not as tech savvy as um, my children, and I'm afraid I'm not as tech savvy as my grandchildren now. But with that, I'm so proud of what we accomplished, so proud of what we did as an industry. You know, never before, and we've gone through an event like this, the Dre Show. And I'm talking about our member mutuals and Grinnell Mutual. Never before have we had so many people to serve. And you know what, I really truly feel this way. I know we're gonna do this at Grinnell Mutual, but I really truly feel that we have laid the groundwork and created some history soon, you know, to be folklore of just how do good companies get things done. And I hope 20 years from now, they talk about the Dre Show of 2020, and they say, you know what, our industry performed. We need to do the same things. We need to put the customers first. We need to find ways to service them. And that will make sure and, and assure our future. So with that, once again, I wanna thank you for joining me today. And I really look forward to next year to make this address at, uh, in front of a live audience in our auditorium. I really look forward to that, but I'm so happy that you joined us today and I wish you the very best. Have a great day, a great weekend coming up and may 2021 be a great year for you and your families. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry, one more question just popped in just before I shut this off. Um, well, so many employees 
wanting to work from home, how would that impact Grinnell Mutual's expenses? Well, you know, it's a quid pro quo thing here a little bit because some expenses will go down, you know, but other others would increase. Some some you know technology expenses may go up. Some expenses as having office locations or multiple locations uh, will go down. I think that might reduce our expenses slightly, uh, but not but not significantly. Some of those expenses will just move to other areas. There's there's more expenses for technology, more expenses uh, for you know the data, more extent expenses for maintaining those lines of communication, things of that nature. But what we've found is uh, we've had a drop in expenses. The biggest drop in expenses that we had in 2020 was a reduced travel expenses from the normal travel that has done uh, business travel. Thank you for that question. And the, the last question I have is a, is a thank you. And, um, you know, I won't say your last name, but I'll say your first. And, and, and Dan, you're, you're very welcome. I appreciate you, Dan. All right, with that, it's like I say, it's a pleasure getting to visit with you today. I look forward to next year seeing you in the auditorium and uh, seeing you face to face. These are always a little bit more fun, but uh, when you can do them in person, but I'm so glad you joined us today. May you have a, a great day and a great week. Thank you very much.